Hello, I am Todd Atkinson. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about containment theory. What is containment theory? Containment theory is a social control theory that was developed by Walter Reckless in the 1960s. It suggests that people are pushed and pulled into crime. Pushes are factors that pressure an individual to engage in delinquent behavior, where pulls draw individuals away from accepted behaviors. But what set containment theory apart from the other social control theories of the time was that it looked to what stopped people from committing crimes. These are called containments, and they are believed to have to buffer pushes and pulls. There are two categories of containments, inner and outer. Inner containments deal with the individual and how they withstand pushes and pulls. Outer containments consist of the external factors that could be the reason an, an individual refrains from delinquent behavior. Cause of the crime. Pushes are the factor that pressure individuals into delinquent behavior and crime. One aspect is the environment. The living situation that an individual is in, uh, like their house, neighborhood, and surrounding community. Uh, another part could, uh, another push could be the poverty, could be poverty, racism, and lack of opportunities that they experience. Uh, these just go to show the socio-economic cultures, which are the factors that create a general idea how, of how society progresses, and when you're not progressing with society, you're being left behind, and being left behind and excluded leads you more likely to commit crimes. Opposite of pushes are pulls, which draw individuals away from accepted behavior. Um, there is family, uh, which when you're in a good family environment where your your family is around and supportive, you're less likely to be pulled towards criminal activity. There is the media, so the things that we see in movies, TV, the internet, in propaganda, change your views and make us deviate away from what what we see as good. Uh, moving on, uh, there are your peers, so your good and bad influences um, can sway you either way. Good influences will keep you possibly away from criminal activity, and bad influences might pull you towards the criminal activity. Uh, and lastly, there's the subculture, so the cliques and the gangs that one to be a part of or experience in their life could be a huge pull towards criminal activity, especially with gangs. But let's look closer at the inner and outer containments. So, internal or inner containments deal with the individual. There is frustration tolerance, goal orientation, norm retention, and self concept. Uh, frustration tolerance basically how you deal with getting mad at something and so if you get mad at something and lose control you're more likely to do something you regret and it there's a possibility of it being it's the law um, there is the, the goal orientation uh, so if you're working towards a goal you know you want to go to college get a good job and provide for your family. If you're working towards that, you're less likely to stray from that path and be pulled or pushed towards criminal and, del and delinquent behavior. And then there's norm retention, which, you know, uh, you're accepting of what is considered to be, considered and deemed to be normal behavior. So you're not out there doing radical things that could be against the law or and then there is a uh, self-concept um, this one was stressed heavily by reckless in his studies on his writings and studies on containment theory because it is how an individual sees themselves so 
but your self-image. You know, if you have a good self-image, then you're probably doing well in life. You like where you're at. You like where you're going, and you're gonna you're gonna keep doing it. If you don't like your where you're going, you know, possibly your your, your life just took a downturn, and, and all of a sudden an opportunity arises, and you join a gang or something like that, and you're now criminal. Um, moving on over to the outer containments, which are the external, uh, external or outer containments that deal with outside forces. So there is the av availability of meaningful rules and the internalization of those rules. Uh, kind of go together because what good are meaningful rules if they are not internalized, accepted, followed? Also, group reinforcement, so encouragement and support from peers is a big part of the group reinforcement, along with being involved in a community and having a sense of being within that community. Um, role models, so uh, if you have a role model in your life that you look up to and you want to be like them, you are less likely to stray away from that. And also, if you have a role model, you might want to impress them, or um, yeah, you want to impress them. Um, moving on to entertainment in the workplace and ethics, there is uh, in the workplace the internal containment is not limited just to the indiv individual but more is focused on the employee base and so that kind of takes the place of the individual here and so there's the ethics training programs which is part of the entertainment in the workplace so uh, these ethics programs are for new employees normally and it teaches them and helps them to reinforce the ethical behaviors that they should and the unethical behaviors that they should not be doing. Then there is leadership. So leadership is very important in the workplace. Um, a good leader will get you working towards your goals, which is goes along with the goal, ori goal orientation portion of the inner containment. Um, and to go co co inside alongside that would be teamwork, so working together as a team to get done what you set out to do, your goal. And then lastly are values. So what the company believes in, uh, basically their, their vision and mission statements. Now we move on to the outer containments, which are once again the external factors. So the consumer's bill of rights, uh, which states that consumers have the right to safety, the right to be informed, the right to choose, and the right to be heard. This basically just makes sure that businesses are not taking advantage of the consumers. Also, there is the federal sentencing guidelines for organizations, which are guidelines that incentivize companies to discourage unethical behavior making sure that just further just rewarding people for making sure that their employees are not uh, behaving unethically then government regulations so the federal government keeping an eye on everyone making sure that fraudulent and unethical behavior is not taking place that, moving on to the strengths and weaknesses of containment theory uh, one strength is that containment theory is well defined in its pushes, pulls, inner and outer containments. And that also that containment theory is succinct, meaning it is brief, clear, and uncomplicated. On the other side we have weaknesses. Weaknesses. And there are uh, one of the weaknesses is that there are limited studies. Um, 
not many studies were done on containment theory and the ones that were done yielded narrow results because of the population of the studies and the little data that was collected was not fully analyzed to fully determine the validity of containment theory in practice. Uh, another weakness uh, of containment theory is that major crimes are not accounted for. Um, mainly because it's mainly because that it only, only accounts for the lower and mid-range acts of delinquency and not the big crimes like murder and stuff like that. Um, and lastly, there is self-concept and that is a weakness because it is relied on right, relied upon very heavily and it's, it's more than any other containment and that just makes for a bad thing because you can't just rely upon one thing. You have to fill out the whole bill. To conclude, containment theory does a pretty good job of explaining what causes people to commit crime and what causes them to refrain from it. And here is the work cited I have. And thank you very much.